In the music section this week, we have Shadows Fall giving us an update from the studio. We have a very unexpected return in the new music section. And then new music, kind of, from Slipknot and possibly Pantera. Th there's a lot to get to. Let's, let's do this. Welcome, nerds, to this week's edition of the Music News. This is just a section, one section of six, count them, six other sections that we do over on the main channel in a show I like to call Week in Nerddom, where we talk about all of the nerdy things. You can find a link to that show down in the description or at the end of this video. Now let's talk about new music, touring information, and other generally interesting things to do with the music news. You thought I was going to say generally nerdy, didn't you? So let's start things off with the follow-ups and corrections. Follow-ups this time has to do with Shadows Fall. Sounds like the Shadows Fall record that they've been apparently working on for some time, as they have announced when they first did those reunion shows, is going very, very well. And we might be getting that album very soon-ish. So Brian Fair was on the radio, WSOU 89.5 FM, and said that they have approximately six or seven songs recorded already. And since they have no label behind them, they're not trying to rush it out. But with about half of a record done at this point, it's only safe to assume that we should be seeing new Shadows Fall music released sometime this year. And that is super exciting. Uh, that's all we have, though, in follow-ups and corrections. So let's get into the new music. Boy. This week in new music. Starting things off, we have Sebastian Bach, who this record has been a long time coming. The name of the record is Child Within Me, but the name of the song that we're talking about, the single that he just released, is Everybody Bleeds. This kind of sounds like you would very much expect Sebastian Bach to sound in 2024. It's It's got elements of that hair stuff that he was definitely a big part of back in the 80s, and a little bit of the throwback stuff that he honestly does better than most. Like, the only band that's coming to mind right now is Hinder, but that's not the best example of the sound that I'm talking about. But still, like, definitely doing it better than a lot of people in the octane core kind of realm of things, which is good because he's a veteran of the genre and absolutely should be knocking it out of the park. And he is. The tone in this song, I am super jealous of the bass tone. I really, really am digging the mix here. The quality of the music itself kind of leaves something to be desired, but it's not exactly a subgenre that I generally dive into much anyway. It's just good to see Sebastian Bach making some solid tunes. So absolutely recommend for just about anybody just to listen. You don't got to spend money on it, but give it a listen because it's it's nice. Now let's talk about Vended. This is, once again, the band that features Sean Crahan and Corey Taylor's sons, which are Simon Crahan and Griffin Taylor, respectively. And every time I talk about them, I'm like, all right, so that's probably the last time we're gonna react to new music from this band. And then they put out something new and it sounds so very different or so like they've evolved so well. So the name of this song is The Far Side. Again, these kids just get a little bit better every time they release something, so it's always worth mentioning when they put out a new release. This track, showing a little bit more of their influence of their fathers on their music, but also showing how they can go beyond that influence all at the same time. So I've said previously that at times Griffin sounds very, very much like his father as far as his singing goes. And that happens definitely in this song. There's a chorus, there's a big, very sing-songy chorus that is something that Corey would have done in a Slipknot track. But the verses, the more aggressive style that he's affecting with his voice is a little bit beyond, I feel like, where his father generally goes. I think instrumentally, it's a lot more on the extreme side of things, which is a kind of an interesting thing to say about Slipknot because they're rather extreme to begin with. But there's like, there's almost this like quasi deathcore influence on this and I'm totally digging it. So absolutely recommend Farside from Vended. Dead Icarus has released new music and I feel like 
I, I can't help myself but to talk about anything that Alex Varkatsis puts out. The name of the track is Ad Infernum. We now know that the EP that he's going to be releasing under the Dead Icarus name is of the same title, Ad Infernum. And this feels, this feels more like the logical evolution of what the Atreyu sound, what I was expecting out of the Baptized record. What I was expecting out of anything they've really done since Alex left the band. This is kind of where that sound, I thought that sound was going to go. So it's really awesome to see Alex has the ability to recreate that Atreyu kind of feel. But if you've listened to the other singles off of this EP, he definitely is a little bit more on the heavy side, which, also speaks more good to my ears, if you will. So yes, Dead Icarus, Ad Infernum, solid, solid track. This is very much on the metalcore side of his influential sound and just a great, I really dig, I really, really dig. Are you, are you prepared to live through what you believe in? I think it's such an interesting take on, a, on a, a, a lyrical idea that we've heard so many times and it just twists it just a little bit to make it feel super fresh. I dig it. I love it. I think Alex is lyrically at his peak right now. I don't know if he's, if he's going to continue this, but I really hope he does. Check out Ad Infernum from Dead Icarus. And we talked about this in the live show last week, and so I, we, we had to do a proper listen to it. Burton C. Bell has finally released a single or some music from his upcoming uh, solo release. Under his name, Burton C. Bell, BCB, and the name of this first track is Anti-Droid. And this, I mean, if there was any question as to whether or not Burton C. Bell could continue without Fear Factory, then this should definitely put that to bed very quickly. This is a super solid track. It is a bit more of a slow burn. It's a lot more on the industrial side of things with some ambient kind of elements to it as well. So you get a lot more uh, feeling rather than the speed and the, the furiosity that we're used to from F Fear Factory. There's a lot of anger in these lyrics. There's a lot of furiosity in the music. It's just tuned down a whole lot <laughs> as far as like the just the general pace of the song, which feels great. It feels refreshing to see Burton go outside of that sound that we know him for so very well while still hearkening back to it in a certain way. So super solid industrial stuff. This is more goth industrial than metal industrial like we got from Fear Factory and still very, very good stuff. So absolutely recommend Anti-Droid from Burton C. Bell. Let's get into a genre of music that we don't touch on as much here on the channel for many reasons, but not the least of which just because it's hard for me to get into modern stuff in the rap and hip-hop side of music. We we do reactions to them from time to time, but only very pointed reactions. We're talking specifically about Eminem's new track, Doomsday 2, which is through the lyrical... The only release I've seen for this, I haven't seen like a proper stream, uh, digital release or, or anything like that. The only release I've seen for this is through Lyrical Lemonade's YouTube channel. Lyrical Lemonade does a lot of hip hop music videos. All the guys involved with Lyrical Lemonade uh, specifically are on the video side as far as I understand it. And they just do really quality video work. Um, though I would not be surprised to find out that there's also production work behind the Lyrical Lemonade stuff. It's just been a long time since we've heard from Eminem, an official release. Like there's been a bunch of like underground releases and stuff like that, but I haven't seen anything official come from the Eminem camp for years at this point. So it was super refreshing to see that. It's awesome to see that he's still in fantastic form. Like I, I still feel like anyone in that side of the music business really has reason to worship at the ground this dude walks on just because he's that damn good and so much so like this song is uh, around two minutes long and it just feels like there should have been more my only complaint about this because the video is really cool a bunch of random cameos from hip-hop acts and such but just the only gripe i have about this is the fact that it is so short like i the eminem that i grew up listening to did not do very short songs he did pretty medium length to long songs uh, if you will so very weird to see that but still it's good to see the goat is still at it. Go check out Doomsday 2 from Eminem. 
All right, let's get back over onto the deathcore side of things. We have a very unexpected track here for a number of reasons that we'll get into, but Immortal Disfigurement has released a new single, a new video for that single as well called Showcase of Phlegm. Uh, it's glad to see that the drama behind the scenes with this record is subdued at least long enough to put out more music from it. We've gone into in, in some detail about what's going on. CJ McCreary has been canceled in the very recent past. And then also when he first put this band together, apparently is really hard to work with. So it was very much in question whether or not we were going to get the final few tracks on this record and if it was going to be released as a record. And with the release of a new single, it would seem that that is at least going to happen. What happens beyond the release of the record still very much remains to be seen. But let's talk about the song. A showcase of Phlegm is more CJ McCreary being one of the greatest deathcore vocalists out there ever even because this is solid and and that's not to say that the rest of the band are slouching or relying on the fact that cj is great at what he does they are also killing it in this i think the, the unfortunate name that they have gone with for their band aside i think this is absolutely one of the best acts in the genre right now so with that being said i think if we do get this record released properly, I'm very much looking forward to the possibility that there will be a tour to support this record because I just want to see them recreate this stuff live. And if you are into the deathcore, then you probably feel the same way. If you haven't heard it yet, go check out Showcase of Phlegm from Immortal Disfigurement. Next up on the list for new music, we have Zayo, <laughs> a new track from Zayo, a band I haven't heard from for some time. It's not to say they've been dormant, they just haven't really been on my radar. So Zayo's new track, Croatoan, is coming from a live record that they did during the final days of the pandemic, it would seem. It's called Live from the Church. This is definitely a different Zayo than I remember. I remember the more metalcore, kind of the, on the extreme side of metalcore, but still very much a metalcore kind of Christian band. Probably still Christian, they're recording in a church, so I'm, I'm assuming that that's still very much a uh, part of the identity of the band. But the, they've very much left the metalcore stuff behind. This is almost like a post-hardcore kind of sound. Lots of atmospherics, lots of layers, lots of very different kind of more challenging things to listen to. This is not music for beginners on the heavy stuff. If you are into like say Neurosis, the, the more heavy stuff that Neurosis did, then this is probably gonna be a little bit more up your alley. If you're into the more experimental side of the heavy music, then again, more up your alley. If you just wanna hear chugs and breakdowns, I would probably stay away from this Zayo release, but it's really cool to see a band from my past come back with something so interesting. And our final piece of new music this week comes from Avenged Sevenfold. We've talked about the this new record from them a couple of times and I think we finally found the track that's gonna get me to listen to the whole record. The name of the track is Cosmic. They just released the video for it. And this is what I was expecting. This is probably the ballad I would, I would say for the record because they do tend to do a ballad or two every record or so. And I, I would say this is very likely that. And this is much more coherent as far as song structure, as far as they're, they're kind of toning down on the experimental things that they, they have done on previous outings from this record, previous singles. And so this, I think, if, if we can get a little bit more of this on the record, then I'm definitely going to be checking it out a little more seriously. I. This is what I expected Avenged Sevenfold to evolve into, was this kind of sound. Again, through the lens of this being the ballad for the record, this makes a lot of sense. So this, yeah, did this did its job. I'm, I'm gonna go check out this full record now for sure. So you should check out Cosmic from Avenged Sevenfold. Which then puts us into tours and festivals. We did have two tours announced, rather significant tours, at least in my world. <laughs> so the first of which is He Is Legend has announced that they're going to be headed out on tour with support from 
uh, Code 7, who I've never heard of, The Seafloor Cinema, also whom I've never heard of, and Johnny Booth, who is fantastic. Though the sad part about the Johnny Booth bit is they're only on like the last five dates of this tour. Uh, the tour starts May 3rd in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, runs through June 8th in Columbia, South Carolina, which I believe is close to where the boys in He Is Legend are from. One of the greatest just general kind of southern tinged metal acts around right now is He Is Legend. They've, it's a little bit of that southern kind of metalcore stuff and I just can't speak highly enough of them. If you have the opportunity to go see them live, absolutely take it because it's, it's a hell of a show. Tickets can be found in the link down below. Go check it out. Our other piece of touring news this week has to do with Hatebreed. They are celebrating 30 years as a band. Uh, 30th anniversary tour is going to be featuring Carcass, Harm's Way, and Crypta. If you don't know who Crypta is, because the other two bands have been around for some time, but if you don't know who Crypta is, they are a new female-fronted kind of death metal band. Pretty great, honestly. Not, not. I haven't heard anything bad from them, but I've only heard like two singles, so it's not to say it doesn't exist. But September 26th is when this kicks off in Portland, Maine. It runs through October 27th in Norfolk, Virginia. It's going basically everywhere, so check it out. Hatebreed is also one of those bands that you really have to catch live. That's all we have for touring and festivals. Let's talk about some regular ass news now. Our first up is Journey. <laughs> not a band we talk about a whole lot, but when a Journey song comes on, you can't help but sing. And that's actually got something to do with the news piece we're talking about right now. Journey's song, Don't Stop Believin', has been certified 18 times platinum. I don't even know, I can't do the math for how many listens and downloads and purchases that is, but it's a lot. Uh, Forbes has recognized the track as the biggest song of all time. Just wanted to start things off with something super uplifting and great because that is a song that I think literally everyone has heard it probably a dozen times over the course of the last year. And you can't really get that tired. I mean, I know, I know you can get tired of anything, but it's a, it's one of those songs that just kind of makes you feel great. So I'm, I'm super excited about that for the guys in Journey. Inter band issues aside. Our next piece comes from Pantera. This one is very divisive, I think. So Pantera is potentially going to be putting out a live record, according to Charlie Bonante, says that they have had conversations about taking this tour that they are on, that they have been on for some time now, and putting out some sort of live material from it. That I think is going to potentially, I mean, there's not gonna be new music on there. It's going to be new material or new recordings of old music, I should say. So hopefully the fan base won't get too crazy about it, but I feel like it's a great, in my personal opinion, it's a great way to kind of document the fact that they're doing this in remembrance of the Abbott brothers. So yeah, I think I, I can get behind it as long as it's done tastefully, <laughs> if you will. Uh, that's what we got on that one though. Let's talk next. Slipknot, actually more specifically, Former Slipknot, uh, Anders Kolsefini, or yeah, Kolsefni rather, sorry. The original vocalist for the band Slipknot, who was the vocalist for their self-released output, Mate, Feed, Kill, Repeat, is re-recording Mate, Feed, Kill, Repeat. And actually, it should be available to stream as we are talking about it now. I believe it went up on like Monday or Tuesday of this week. So yes, you should be able to go find the newly recorded version of Mate, Feed, Kill, Repeat, presumably with the musicians he took on tour with him down in New Zealand, I believe is where they went. So yeah, just kind Kind of awesome. He said in a press statement that he's doing this as a as a way to honor the memories of his fallen brothers in Slipknot, specifically Paul Gray, Joey Jordanson, because those are the two that he worked with who have been in the band. There have been a number of others that have been fired and such. But those two have passed and makes just makes sense. It's really cool. I, I'm very intrigued. I have yet to listen to it because I've been working on getting the episode up this week, but I haven't listened to it yet. Very intrigued to go listen to it. They're hopefully in the article linked down in the description. 
There is hopefully a link to the Spotify playlist that has all of the re-recorded songs on it. If not, I'll see what I can do to find one, though I'm not making any promises. That is what we have for regular ass news this week. So let's talk about music suggestion this week. We have, he is legend. We talked about him in the touring section. We're going to talk about him for the suggestion. It's he is legend, White Bat, not the most recent record they've put out. I haven't listened to End This Hallway yet, but White Bat is return to these guys being fantastic. The Heavy Fruit record was good, but wasn't quite what I wanted out of a He Is Legend record. White Bat is absolutely back into the We Are He Is Legend, We Have The Swagger, and we're going to lean into it for a whole damn record. And I mean, obviously the, the biggest standout track was White Bat that starts the record. There was also the, uh, I think I wrote down the name of the, nope, I didn't write down the name of the other one that I really dug. It Im, Im, Immortal, I think was the name of it, something like that. It's like the second to last or third to last track. Also a highly standout track, but really this whole record is just rocking. So go check out White Bat. That is your suggestion for music this week. That brings us to the end of the video, nerds. Thank you very much for joining me for the news. Once again, there is a full and probably much more up-to-date and recent episode of the news, the full-length version, if you will, called The Week in Nerdom over on the main channel, linked down in the description and probably link popping up somewhere around my face right about now. So click on that, go check that out as well. Or if you prefer your news in more truncated pieces, then by all means, just stick around here and go check out some of the other stuff we offer on this channel. Thank you very much for joining me. We will see you in the next one. Before we go, always, always remember, nerds, that if it is generally nerdy, it's probably here.